السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله we thank Allah جل وعلا for having granted us the opportunity to go through so many stories in the Quran الحمد لله we've reached the 21st جزء inshallah we'll be discussing two stories today بإذن الله I just wait for Sheikh Ibrahim. Inshallah, he comes in soon. Two stories we'll be touching on. The first is the story of Luqman. Most of the scholars mention that he was a pious man, not necessarily a Nabi, or he wasn't a Nabi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh Adnan? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm well, and I hope all, all the viewers are well as well. Inshallah, we hope everybody is well, enjoying the Ramadan, and getting ready for the last few nights of Ramadan. Shaykhana, today we've got uh, just two stories in the 21st Jews. The first is the story of Luqman. Most of the people mention, or most of the scholars mention that he was not a Nabi, but rather a pious man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a whole surah. This whole chapter of the whole surah is known as uh, Surah Luqman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how Luqman, he was very wise, and he speaks about how he was advising his son. And then he gives him a lot of pieces of advice. There's a lot that stands out in the story, a lot of lessons we can derive. I think what stands out for me firstly is this father and son relationship or parent and child relationship. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising somebody or a pious man, Luqman, who was, you know, advising his son. He had a good relationship with his son. And I think when it comes to our day-to-day -day lives also, it's important to have Firstly, good relationships with our children and for the children to have good relationships with the parents. And I think the first few pieces of advice in this and the first few ayat when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the story is speaking about parents and, you know, how to live with them, how the father gives advice to the son or how the parent, the mother could give child, uh, advice to their children. So I think that's very important. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think that's something that uh, parents really can uh, work on, uh, especially in today's time where children are on a different level altogether. Uh, you know, they're doing different things. It's a different world. It's a, techno a technological, uh, technologically advanced world uh, in which they're, you know, getting, uh, you know, they're moving very fast. And then parents find it sometimes difficult to keep up with the level at which their children are at. And at the same time, you know, the children need to be as uh, understanding as possible with their parents and try and understand where they come from. Sometimes they have valid points and uh, valid, you know, arguments, etc. Um, yeah, when it comes to yes. parents, uh, I, maybe if we could expand on that point a little bit, I just wanted to mention something. For example, when it comes to people around us, even myself, yourself, sometimes people see us today and they think that maybe our parents were ulama, that we, that was not really the case. However, we've learned things from them that we have we may not have learned from, you know, scholars, so to say, lessons in life, lessons on how to deal with things. You know, sometimes whether it's you playing sports or you go out for a meal, there's certain things you learn from your parents, your father, your mother, where nobody else will be able to teach you in life. And I think that's, I think we personally saw that as we grew up. And everybody else who was fortunate enough, you know, to spend time with your parents, you would realize that, yes, it's good to learn from everybody else. But sometimes you've got a whole institution, a walking institute in your house, you know, make use of them and learn from them. Allah, that's so true, especially, uh, you know, in today's world where you've got different people out there and different experiences you've got a wealth of experience around you if you look at the people surrounding you your parents your aunts, your aunt and uh 
subhanAllah, it's, it's true that, you know, not everything needs to be taken from a scholar or a sheikh of the deen. You can take certain things from other people as well who can teach you so much in life, etc. Uh, I think that's so true, uh, especially in our case where we had different people and we drew on the experience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them a lot of uh, goodness, I mean, and reward them. Shaykh, now we can't really hear you. It's cutting off a little bit. Oh, Wallahi, it's, uh, it's a pity. <laughs> it started again. Khair, alhamdulillah. So, um, can, I, can I move on? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Bunaya inna in taku mithkala habbatim min khardalin fata kun fi sahratin au fi samawati au fil ardi at tibi Allah inna Allah latifun khabir. That Luqman told his son that, O oh my son, if there is something, a wrong deed equal to the weight of a mustard seed, and it is in a rock or in the heavens or in the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it. In Allah latifun khabir, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is subtle and he is all knowing. I think sometimes just looking at the ayah, we can learn so much from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that, look, no matter what it is, he will come, he will bring it. He will come with it on the day of Qiyamah. Sometimes we do something small in our lives and we think, oh, it's just something minor. Uh, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a record of that and he uh, will bring it on the day of Qiyamah. So I think the perspective from which we look at a wrong deed or a wrong action is something that uh, is of, prof of, of uh, absolute importance. So we shouldn't look at something as small, even though it may actually be seem to be small. Uh, you've done a wrong deed, seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't look at it as something small. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that even if it is in the, the rock, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it. So that's something just from the apparent uh, verse we can learn from this and we, we don't even need to really ponder over it. SubhanAllah, what a powerful point. Also, when people remember that, you know, on the day of Qiyamah, this weight will be, you know, every single thing, no matter how heavy, however, how, no matter how light, it will be weighed. As Allah says, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرْوَةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرْوَةٍ شَرًا يَرَهُ Whoever does good, equivalent, you know, a dharra could mean an ant or a small speck of dust, basically the smallest unit of measure. Whoever does good, equivalent to that, he will see it. And whoever does evil, equivalent to that, will also see it. And from this, some of the scholars mention, that, you know, a person doesn't know which good deed may enter them into Jannah. So whenever you find a good deed you're able to do, do it, carry it out, because you don't know which one is going to be that good deed that Allah gets you into Jannah. And also a person doesn't know which deed, which evil, maybe just that small deed that, you know, makes his scales tip on the wrong side. And may Allah save us. I mean, I mean. Sheikh, is there anything else you'd like to mention on this story before we move on? No, I think let's move on, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks, he mentions a lot of ahkam. He also, uh, there is also Surah to sajda which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. Thereafter, there is Surah to Al-Ahzab. Surah to Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the believers of the time where they were surrounded by the groups. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu thkuru ni'mat Allahi alaykum id ja'atkum junudun fa arsalna alayhim reehan wa junudan lam tarawha. O you who believe, remember the time when you were, you know, the groups came to you, all different groups and different armies came to attack you. And they came from all sorts of places. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who helped you. He sent a wind and these people got scared and they went away. And he also sent an army which you could not see. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions some of the difficulties during this battle. He says, هُنَالِكَ بْتُلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا They, at that point, the believers were tested and they were shaken up. وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا Severely. I think what I take from this is that, yes, as a Muslim, we believe. But it's also important to remember, yes, we make dua to Allah always to grant us goodness, to grant us ease, 
you know, to save us from harm and difficulty and calamity. But there are times in your life where you may face certain challenges and certain difficulties, not because there's something wrong with you, but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants to test you, He wants to raise your level. So I think you, you shouldn't rule that out. You know, sometimes a freak accident can occur or something you, you never imagined, something if you looked at it and dissected the situation, you would find that it shouldn't really have happened. It's only Allah who wished it to happen. So if these were the, the Sahaba, the best of creation, and Allah is saying they were shaken and tested at that point, what about us? We ask Allah to protect us and to make things easy for us. And if there is ever a difficulty, you know, we ask him to keep us steadfast and help us to get through it. I mean, I mean, I think this is uh, something of uh, importance at the moment, especially uh, considering the circumstances across the globe. Uh, people can really take a page out of this and learn from it. So, subhanAllah, that's a very uh, valid point at the right at the right time. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلَّ يَنْفَعَكُمُ الْفِرَارُ إِنْ فَرَضْتُمْ مِنَ الْمَوْتِ أَوِ الْقَتْلِ وَإِذَا لَا تُمَتَّعُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا uh, Never will fleeing benefit you should you flee from death or killing. And then you would not be given an enjoyment of life, life except for a little. I think if we ponder over this verse, we'll come to realize that what's the worst thing that can happen to us in our lives? What's our deepest fear? And that most people will come up with this answer that, you know, to die, that's my deepest fear. But if we come to terms with the fact that we're all going to die, we're all going to leave this world ultimately, uh, then the fears that we have, the rest of the fears that we have uh, tend to be lessened. So the, the anxiety that you feel because Perhaps you wake up in the morning and your business is not doing well and all of a sudden you've lost your job or uh, these fears, uh, you know, they, they, they look a little less or they look more trivial in your eyes now because now that you've come to terms with the fact that ultimately you've got a certain number of years within those years, you've got to make it or break it. So you, you, you realize that, you know what, this doesn't matter. Let it pass. Let me move. Let me try and uh, improvise, do something. And ultimately, I'll get there. Uh, but if you sit and ponder and, and uh, you know, think too much about the problems that you're going through currently, uh, then you tend to think that, you know, uh, you, you, you become despondent with, with regards to life and you start thinking about how you're ever going to make it. Don't focus on that. And I think it's important because, you know, uh, this is why in Islam we're encouraged to think about the afterlife, encouraged to think about the fact that we're uh, going somewhere, we're going to leave this dunya ultimately. It gives you courage and hope that I, ca I can do something with my life right now. Let me work and let me try. You know, if I try and I fail, alhamdulillah, I've tried at least, uh, but I gave it a shot. If I don't try, then I'm not going to ever uh, succeed anyways. So I think it's something important. Yes, if you've got the opportunity, you might as well try and do it. Whether you fail or not is besides the point, because so many times you learn from those experiences, you you know, you meet people you may not have met. You learn things you may not have learned in life. And in fact, you'll always learn. Even That's why there's no real thing as a failed experience. Yes, you may not have got the result you wanted. But you know, you learn something new. And that's, that's important. Especially as you mentioned, at a time where things are difficult, instead of, you know, sitting and worrying the whole day, uh, being sad, falling into depression, try and do something, look for solutions. Yes, it's difficult, it's normal to be a bit sad, but don't let, don't reach a level where, you know, you're now sitting idle and you've given up on life completely. Yeah, one, two hours, one, two days, you know, you're a little bit sad, but then try your best to move on. And I think something very beneficial when it comes to this is surround yourself with the right people, the right group. A lot of times our group physically may be right because we you know we at home just interacting with the right people but online our groups online you know everybody is using whether it's twitter or instagram depending on the people you follow depending on the message they give out or they portray or what they say you usually find that your feelings follow that so if you're following only people who are talking about maybe let's say enjoyment total enjoyment, only enjoyment, and now they're unable to enjoy, you might also feel like that. As opposed to if you're talking to people who, you know, even through this difficult crisis, they are doing things, they are building things, they are making things, 
whether it's dini making the most out of this time or dunya we you know doing well in their worldly affairs i think you it would also you know push you to do this you know i was reading something interesting the other day a side note they said that one guy on a zoom call whilst everything is closed right now he was able to raise 800 million dollars for one of his companies and they said that if this guy can do that you know what are you you doing sitting at home yes you may not raise that much money and it's not all about money what i'm trying to say is that you don't worry about the situation this was over a zoom call things had changed so you also change and you you make the most of your resources available yes making the most of circumstances and resources available i think that's of utmost importance and like like you mentioned you know you surround yourself with winners you you will become a winner most likely you surround yourself with losers you will become a loser ultimately uh, and that's putting it very uh, you know brashly and very straightforward because uh, people tend to you know sugarcoat this and say no you become a neg- no it's true you ultimately become a loser why because what will happen is you you'll just keep listening to all this negativity a hey, it's so bad look at the situation look at what's happening it's very bad it's very bad it's very bad and then your mindset becomes like that you begin to think like uh things are very bad and you give yourself excuses to do nothing uh whereas a guy who's got uh you know positivity and uh, good good people around him that are Uh, encouraging etc they are winners they are always winning uh, he's listening to good ideologies mentalities listening to different people um then this person tends to make the best of what he has and doesn't make excuses you know hey we've just got to do what we've got to do and let's move on you know as long as it's within a certain uh, framework of course and you know it's uh, interesting we're speaking about company now with the last 10 days coming up you'd find that sometimes a person they themselves want to do good deeds you might say okay i'm going to read my quran or i'm going to perform extra salawat and somebody amongst them amongst the group whether physically or online or whatever they may say no there's still time for that you can do it later leave it for now you know later on we'll all do it i think that's one of the reasons a lot of people feel they lose out you know sometimes you have to learn how to put your foot down or say no we're not saying be rude we're saying in a nice way excuse yourself you know what i i just got to do this this is my goal for today i need to read four pages of quran extra for example just go and do it you've saved that relationship but be- before that you've saved yourself and then there's some people in life later on as inshallah we'll have a whole session on it even in that way it's you know you can be good to them as in sahih al bukhari the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was being approached by a man the worst of people at the time and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know he mentioned this that what type of a person he is however when he came the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know he spoke to him nicely a little while and he went so aisha radiyallahu anha asks the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam about this and then he mentions how you know the worst of people are people who others are trying to stay away from their evil but at the same time look at how you know he didn't confront him and waste his time to fight with him no he gave him his his right in terms of salam and a little bit of talk but also let him go at the same time so the same when it comes to especially these last 10 days don't allow anybody else to waste your time and do it properly diplomatically in a good manner but remain firm subhanallah subhanallah there's so much there that we can take from that you know uh, j- just the fact that people need to learn how to say no and to say it nicely as well is something that we can really really learn from because uh, ultimately we we sometimes feel like it's you know we feel a bit too ashamed to say no or to stand up from a majlis or to leave but there's a nice way to do it and if you can do it in a in a good manner then why not you know i tell you something interesting i read for some of the thinkers in a field business field this growth field they said one of the biggest lessons you can learn in life is how to say no and how to say no the first time because if you don't say no the first time and you say yes once it's very hard to come out of things afterwards so you agree to this and then it eventually gets to this and eventually gets to this and eventually gets to this one of the skills you have to learn is how to say no and we saying adding to that we saying and how to say no nicely also because at the end of the day it's your life you know 
sometimes uh, you sit and you think over your life and you say, yeah, I should have achieved this. I should have achieved this. The reality is you didn't achieve that. Yes, you should have. You can still try. But if you look at the main reason for this, you'll find your time was wasted and not necessarily by yourself. Yes, sometimes by yourself, but a lot of the times it's with others, with the group. You know, not being able to fight yourself in that state where there's a whole group and you feel, I'm also feeling lazy. No, you know what? There's a time and a place to sit with everybody, but there's also a time to be serious and work hard. You know, this is so important. Someone just mentioned that I don't know how to say no. Uh, this is not the case with only one one person. There's so many people out there who don't know how to say no. Uh, but and then ultimately, what happens sometimes is they 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 bottle it in, they keep it in, keep it in, and then they burst one day and they say no. You know, it's it's just too much. Don't do that. Don't let it get to that point. Just say no when it's the time to say no. Say it in a nice manner. Uh, sometimes, you know, you even say it in a nice manner and the people on the, uh, you know, receiving end, they, they don't like the rejection. Uh, that That's not your problem. You, you need to understand that that's not your problem. You've done it in the best possible manner and uh, you leave it at that. If they then feel bad or they then, that, that's part of life. Let it pass, you know and try to amend your relationship with that person, but don't don't bother too much about it. Because the minute you start worrying about that person and then their feelings, you won't say no in the first place. Yes, and at the end of the day, as we mentioned, these last 10 nights are for you. You will die yourself. Nobody else will come to you know, sleep in your grave with you. Nobody else will answer for you on the day of Qiyamah. So it's up to you to make the most of it. We're not saying leave the people completely. No, we're saying put it into balance. There's a time where you've got to have for yourself, for yourself, you know, to look after yourself, a time for the creator also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that comes first as in the hadith of uh, Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, where the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him that everything has its rights when it comes to your worship, when it comes to your family, and also when it comes to your own body. So we've got to try and, you know, balance as best we can. Absolutely, Sheikhna. We've had a lovely session. Shall we call it today? Yeah, I think so. Anything else you'd like to mention? Wallahi, I can't think of uh, anything. Today was a short one, but Alhamdulillah. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Be- between uh, Surah, uh, in fact, in Surah to Sajda, at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He speaks a little bit about Musa alayhi salam, and then He speaks a bit about leadership. And he says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا Basically speaking about some of the people of Banu Israel, he said after that we chose, you know, leaders from amongst them. Lama صَبَرُوا You know, when they were patient, وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُوْقِنُونَ And they had conviction in, you know, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for any person to lead, whether you're leading one person at home, whether you're leading yourself, whether you're leading a group of people, a small group, a large group, uh, you'll find in the Quran, whenever leadership is mentioned or some sort of post is mentioned, you will find there's a lot of times sabr is mentioned, being patient in the Quran and Sunnah. Also, you've, you've got to get certain characteristics, learn them if you don't have them, because ultimately you will need those things. And remember, When it comes to leading, you don't just get to the top and be the boss of everybody else. No, there's a whole process of doing it. And you yourself have to be patient. You have to learn patience. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all the ability to master these skills and attain these characteristics, those characteristics that make him happy. Ameen, ameen. Inshallah, we see you tomorrow, Sheikh. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.